Okay. Well, I guess we had a, I had a little late getting out of the office today, so they uh, did a first segment uh, rerun. And so now we're actually live for this portion of the show and for the next 45 minutes. Call in number 727-8750. Uh, that should be up in the, in the bottom of the screen. And for my producer, I need a teleprompter, but uh, we'll get that down the road. Anyway, um, hope everybody had a good President's Day. Um, and uh, hopefully you didn't have to work. We did. We were very busy. Um, weather sure is bone chilling cold, so make sure that you bundle up and uh, take care of yourself. Uh, not let yourself get too uh, cold. Uh, that's, you know, one of the things we never really talk about here, which never really gets that cold, but um, it can be, is, is uh, um, basically uh, freeze injuries. Um, and so uh, hypothermia is a, is a real problem. I um, mean, it comes on you real subtly. And so, you know, obviously you hear the people that are trapped outside in the snow. You hear people that are, um, is there a caller? Okay. I, huh? Who is the caller? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a teleprompter, so I don't know who's, who's the caller. Who's the caller? Huh? Uh, David Stevens. Who? David? David. Yes. Yeah. Um, Anyway, we're just having a few technical difficulties, but uh, what can I do for you, David? Well, I want to ask the doctor a couple of questions. You turn up the A side. question. What, what, what would those be? Well, I had some laser surgery done on me, and it, it didn't take it. I'm, I'm urinating all night long, and uh, that was about three years ago. And uh, I won't find out about this. Um, the question I got is this super beta was superbeta.com and I heard it on the television it's for your, for your prostrates and stuff. Uh -huh. I just wonder if it's safe to take. Super beta prostate? Super beta. Yep. You need to turn your TV down in the background there, David. Okay, all right. I got it down now. Is that all right now? Yeah, it's a little bit better. I can still hear it on, on my end. But uh, Super Beta is uh, Saul Palmetto. Yeah. S-A-W-P-A-L Palmetto. And it yeah, they advertise it all the time on television. Right. It, it does work. I mean, it's, it's it weak. Works. It works? Yes, it we, it's weak. It's not as strong as some of the medications out there, but it is all natural, and it does help. Oh, uh-huh. And it's safe to take. Yes, it is safe to take. That's what I wanted to find out because... Uh... Yes, it is. It doesn't really interfere with anything. I mean, obviously, everybody can have issues with it. I mean, people can have any reaction to anything over the counter. It is potentially a food additive, uh, but it, it, it does work, and you have to give it a little bit to, to take effect. But um, it, it, does seem to, um, it does seem to help. And I would give trying. it, yeah, I, I would, I would give it a hell, I would give it a good try. Yeah, I think I will, yeah. That was my question. So do you get up, do you get up at night and urinate a lot? Or all just, night. All night long? Oh, sometimes three or four times, then sometimes more, and just a little bit comes out. Okay. And a whole, sometimes a whole lot will come out. Do don't, you? Or urinate, don't, just don't come out like it should. Do you do you drink a lot of fluids at night? I drink a uh, yeah, and not not a lot, but I drink enough of water when I take pills and stuff, vitamins and pills, and I drink water with it. Okay, so my suggestion that is that you try and cut all, you try and drink earlier in the day. Uh huh. Okay, and get yourself well hydrated, and then you cut that fluid off later in the afternoon and uh -huh. in the evening, and then your food that you eat at night. Um, the earlier you eat, there's a lot of water in, in the food we eat, so that's uh -huh. all going to accumulate also. So, uh -huh. And if you have any swelling in your legs, then wearing some type of compression stocking during the day will also help to uh, uh, prevent the accumulation of fluid in your legs and which you reabsorb when you lay down. Uh, so far, my legs haven't swelled up. Okay. Well then, 
then I think you're in good shape in that respect. Um, uh -huh. And you could probably take one pill more than what's recommended, um, uh -huh. only because I think that that's, uh, you want to try and get the maximal effect of the salt palmetto. It's worth a good try then. Yeah. Yeah. That was my question. Okay. Well, thank you for calling, David. I appreciate well, it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a thank good night. Thank you, Doctor, too. Uh -huh. I enjoy his show. I listen to it every Monday. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate uh -huh. that a lot. I hope, Bye. Yeah. And any time you feel like you need to call back, call back. We're, we're here for you. I will. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye. Okay. So um, I'm glad uh, that he called, that David called. I mean, BPH is, is obviously a, a very common problem in, in males as we get older. Uh, so saw palmetto is very effective. It's cheap. You can buy it over the counter. I encourage people to try that before you um, come get some of the more expensive medications that do have some complications. Um, but the ones we tend to use are what we call an alpha blocker. Um, uh, a lot of people know it today by Flomax is the name or uh, Temulosin, um, which is the, the brand name for that. Um, they used to use Cardura or Hytrin, which were blood pressure pills. And there was an interesting study that came out quite a few years ago that said that unopposed alpha blockers, like for if you were taking them for blood pressure, could cause congestive heart failure. So um, it's very important that if you're taking it for blood pressure, yes, you may get some advantage. But there are two constricting points in the bladder. The bladder, imagine, is kind of like um, it has a nice little, uh, like a light bulb shape. And so where the light bulb comes down to its tip, that is where we get muscular contraction by what they call uh, alpha receptors. And so now if you give an alpha blocker, that it opens that up, okay? Um, and so it helps to open that. In males, there's a prostate, and sometimes these, these drugs, so like drugs like finasteride or Avidart, uh, are drugs that help to block the testosterone effect on the prostate, which is another potential constricting point. So you have two constricting points for male difficulty urinating. One's at the bladder neck. And so people that take opioids for pain medications are going to get more constriction because of the anticholinergic effect. So let's suppose you're taking, you have a, you're a copd -er and you're taking uh, breathing medications. Those can also cause restrictions um, and they can cause dryness. So if you happen to have those particular problems and then you're taking a pain pill on top, then it is going to make it difficult for you to urinate and sometimes an alpha blocker can be very helpful in those respects. Now, the other drugs I mentioned, finasteride and the other medications, they basically block the testosterone effect on the prostate. They're much slower. They take up to six months to reach full effect uh, before you can judge that. Uh, so we usually start with both of them. The patient sees an Im immediate response from the alpha blocker and then eventually receives a later response from the Proscar. Now, by blocking dehydrotestosterone, there is a problem sometimes with uh, male erectile dysfunction. So a lot of people um, want to blame the erectile dysfunction on the prostate. And unless you've had prostatic surgery, that's not usually the case. Um, but if you keep dosing testosterone and keep throwing it at the prostate, eventually it grows and eventually it can become another constricting point. And, you know, if you're young and good health and you're having trouble, it's time to see the urologist. Sometimes they can go in there and do a green light laser or a rotor rooter and remove some of that prostate and then you don't have to take all those medications. Um, if you're taking pain pills, um, it's just something you learn to live with. Um, uh, but we need to make sure that um, it's not affecting your, your kidney uh, because it, what ends up happening, unfortunately, as the, as the urine builds up in the bladder, stretches. And if it continues to stretch, there is a, a stretch receptor in there. So this is why we get the urge to urinate, right? Our bladder increases, increases, and finally it's like snap. You get a reflex that comes through the spine causes vast, causes muscular smooth muscle contraction and you urinate. Now, if the pressure generated by the muscle isn't big enough, then you will get what they call post-void residual. 
It means, let's suppose I have 100 cc's of urine, I want to go to the bathroom, I urinate, and then they measure the amount of urine left in my bladder, and there's 20 cc's of urine left in my bladder. Well, that's a post-void residual of 20 cc's. Usually that's within the normal range, um, but if you start getting higher and higher, then you can see how uh, it doesn't take a lot of water to stretch the bladder to give you the urge to go again. Um, there are other things like neurogenic bladders where you basically have a spinal cord injury and you have to have a catheter. So you see these people that self-cath on TV because of, of spinal cord injury. Um, okay, so um, I've lost my teleprompter, so I'm going to have to work with my um, uh, producer. Uh, I guess Ray's on the phone. Ray? Yeah, Ray the flag band here. Can you hear me okay? I can. All right, sounds good. You know, I, I shut it off when I saw the pre-recorded well, show, I know. and then I got uh, got a message of your answer. I figured I'd give you a buzz. I got a couple questions prepared. I've been thinking about them all day. Okay. One question is, what's this big deal about gluten? Everybody's talking about gluten and uh, take bread out of your diet. I know some people with Crohn's disease claims it helps them out tremendously, something about the yeast and the bread. Is there any validity to uh, this gluten scare right now? Well, it's not a yeast, it's the gluten wheat. I mean, that, that's what you're sensitive to. So it's called gluten-sensitive enteropathy, which is a term for, you know, wheat-sensitive. So I, I, here's, here's what I do with it, Ray. If, if you come to my office and you tell me I have chronic diarrhea, okay, then I need to do an elimination diet to try and help you. The most common causes of diarrhea, chronic diarrhea, are lactose intolerance. And so we eliminate lactose from your diet, and then we use lactaid, L-A-C-T-A-I-D, that you can buy over the counter in a chewable tablet, and then that helps block what little lactose maybe is in your diet. So lactose is a, a two-chain sugar, uh, and because it doesn't get broken down because you're lacking lactase, the enzyme, it now pulls water with it, okay? It can't get through to your tissues, so it pulls water with it, and that causes the diarrhea. So we eliminate that. The next one is elimination of wheat or gluten. So you look for gluten-free diet, and so, and if the diarrhea goes away from gluten, then you know you have a gluten-sensitive enteropathy, and you have to buy gluten-free uh, food. And then if that doesn't work, then we try and eliminate fat, which is a little harder to do. Rarely do people have, have that. And there's also some other rare uh, causes of um, problems like sucrase deficiency uh, or some pancreatic enzyme issues. So, hey, Ray, I, I lost the, the timer, but we're going to go to break. So hang that thought, and we'll be right back. Hang on the phone, okay? Okay, I'll do that, Doc. Thank you, bud. America is great and Pahrump is awesome. We have room for our furry friends and when it's time to care for them, we have the best feed store, Shadow Mountain Feed. Who did Siegfried and Roy call on when their dolphin quit eating? Shadow Mountain Feed. They developed a nutrition solution right in their store. From elephants to dogs and everything in between, they have what you need to feed, grow, and show your animals. They have everything except bread. Don't go there for bread. Shadow Mountain Feed, your one-stop care center for your best friends. At 2371 West Bell Vista, call 775-727-5527. Attorney Jonathan Nelson, reminding you that if you've been injured in an auto accident, it's important to have somebody on your side. So remember, no matter your problems, when you need a lawyer, then you need Nelson. Golden Casino Group has three locations located in Pahrump that fits all your needs. If you're looking for a family staycation, check out Lakeside RV Park, offering 159 full hookup RV sites, a seven acre man-made lake, complete with kayaking, pedal boats, and fishing. The Pahrump Nugget has 69 hotel rooms and is home to many slot machines, table games, an award-winning steakhouse, bingo, bowling, a cafe, and a spacious event center. 
and the largest sports book in town where you can place your wager on your favorite teams and races. Craving some delicious pizza? Slices and Scoops located in Gold Town has made to order pizzas, subs, calzones, and ice cream. We also have Back Porch Cafe, which has traditional foods with an international flair. For more information, find us on the web at goldencasinogroup.com. Okay, so Ray's on the phone and we were talking about um, this gluten sensitive and I was talking about sucrase deficiencies, which is a test for that. And usually those are involved patients who have some pancreatic um, injury, like maybe they had a severe case of pancreatitis that wiped out or they're, um, they've been an alcoholic and they've hurt their, their pancreas. Um, or they had some other issue um, that caused that. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Um, and then we also are doing a stool culture. We're checking for ova and parasites. We're doing a lot of things to try and figure out this diarrhea thing. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Getting back to the gluten. I mean, does everybody have to be cautious with this because they're pushing it so hard on you know these commercials and everything else. And I know people that have uh, been told you know to stay away from bread. There's actually a book out that some doctor prepared a few years ago. I haven't read it, Doc, but uh, saying that you're, it's really a, a horrible thing and that we just, people, the whole diet should not include bread, uh, obviously for the wheat. Well, I, serious or what? Well, there, there is some truth to, to bread being a big cause for weight gain, um, a big cause for insulin, uh, blood pressure and a lot of other things. So, um, but bread is a staple, and I think what the problem Ray is is that it's not that bread is so bad; it's just that people don't get up and do what they normally did back in the day. It, you know, eating was necessary because you were going to get up and go do some work. Now people eat and sit, so bread has become an enemy. Okay, bread has become something that causes us to develop diabetes, causes us to gain weight, can develop, you know, other issues. So I don't know that bread is the evil as much as people are just not as active as they once were. Does that make sense? That makes sense. You know, about 20 years ago, I read something uh, by uh, Dr. Whitaker, Julian Whitaker, and he had said about, you know, uh, different problems with bread and and uh, I tried to do it out for about six weeks. And then I felt, I said, geez, why am I depriving myself? You know, I, I really don't know if, it's, if doing without is going to help me at all. And I incorporated it back into my diet, and it seems to be okay. But it's just when I'm seeing all these, uh, like my friend Paul Miller, they tell him, no gluten, nothing whatsoever. He's a diabetic. And he tries to stick to it, but once in a while he's got to have some toast or whatever. So if, you know, I'm just uh, concerned that maybe they're well, pushing it too hard. Well, you, you got a point there. Diabetes, diabetics, and bread probably don't go together, mm -hmm. okay? And so what I tell my patients is, look, there is a 4-9 grain bread called Ezekiel bread, which you do buy in the, in the store. There are also bread, better bread makers out there that use more natural whole grains. And I think even Smith's carries uh, Killer Bread by Dave and things of that nature. And there, so there are, there are bakeries out there that actually do bake bread that has low gluten or other things. So this Ezekiel bread is a 4-9 grain bread, and it actually has a low glucose um, index so that it, it has 100 calories per slice, but it doesn't raise your sugar very high. That's the danger between white bread. It's just pure flour, and, and it's cooked in an area, and it does make your sugar go up very, very high. Um, and it causes a whole chain reaction within insulin, liver, blood pressure. So I would say that, look, if you're a diabetic, stay away from bread as much as possible, except maybe Ezekiel bread or 4-9 grain bread. More protein always is better for you, except if you have kidney failure, then protein is not your friend. Um, but under those guidelines, protein is much better for you than, uh, than any type of sugar and certainly fat. 
All right, I'm going to relay that to my friend Paul Miller because he's in a quandary as far as bread. He has the craving. You said Ezekiel bread. Is that what the name is? Ezekiel, said? yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a biblical bread. It's a 4 9 grain bread. It's in the frozen food sections. Of, I've seen it in uh, Albertsons and I've seen it in uh, Smith's. Uh, so, 4 9 grain bread is Ezekiel. They have several different. They have a raisin, they have a. Uh, a sesame, and I think they have a plain bread. Now it's drier, and what I do when I eat that is I just put it in the uh, freezer, and I take out a couple of pieces, and I toast them, and they're fine. I'll make grilled cheese out of them. You know, if you're going to mix them with something, they can be dry. It's a drier bread. It's not a a, a different. It's not like uh, moist like Mrs. Baird's or one of those other baker bakers. Well, one thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to mention biblical bread because Paul <laughs> is not a true believer. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, that it, <laughs> but I, I think that we've kind of gotten away from good food and activity. Look, I, I'll say it again, the, the bodybuilders today, the people that are co competitive bodybuilders, are not injecting themselves with, with uh, androgen or anabolic steroids they're injecting themselves with insulin, okay? So insulin builds what you tell it to build. If you eat and go work out, you may build a lot more muscle than you would if you did anything else. And so that's why you look at the kids that get up from the dinner table and go outside and play, they're all lean and they're muscular. As opposed to the kids that get up from the dinner table and go and sit in front of the TV, they're all fat and overweight. And that carries you through to your entire adult life. So it's getting that makes up. Sense, huh? That makes sense. I'm yeah. going to give you one more question and listen to you on TV. And uh, if you're not getting calls in the last segment, I'll call back. The next question is, I asked this about a year or two ago. Uh, my mom, when she got older, she would bruise very easily. You know, just uh, just touch something and she would right. bruise. And now I'm having the same uh, problem. And once in a while, you'll hit something and you start bleeding. Now, is that, I think you mentioned it was a vitamin deficiency, possibly? No. No, it's a, it's a natural, unfortunately, aging process of, we call it, in the medical term, senile pupera, which is really, it sounds like a horrible name, but really what happens is, as we get older, we lose the elastin or a certain type of protein in our skin, and we don't, we're not able to build it back. I mean, it, collagen is a connective tissue, so is elastin. It's like an elastomer, basically, but it, if you pick up your skin and it, and it comes back, you know, it pinches, but it comes back down. And as your skin gets a little older, it becomes a little more crinkly and a, and a little more or less pliable. So what happens is capillaries, the capillary bed in our skin, they break. They don't bend. So if they break, they bleed. And so that's the reason we have this, this really easy uh, bruising in our skin because we lose elastin. So, and we lose some of the fat in our skin too, the sub, some of the subcutaneous tissue. And so our skin, the capillaries break and we get bleeding under the skin. God forbid you have to be on a blood thinner like aspirin or you're taking any type of, uh, you know, Eliquis or any of those drugs. I mean, it's really a bad problem. You almost have to walk around in a space suit to keep your skin from, from bleeding. So, so the only solution for me is to get a time machine, go back 25 years, and I'll be okay, right? Yeah, but you wear gloves, so it should be okay. But, I mean, even then, I mean, people can just brush up against something and they're bleeding under their skin. And then it, it, their skin turns a dark brown. It's kind of like a... Uh, uh, you know, you get that iron deposit under your skin, and, and uh, so yeah, it, it's it's a mess. But there is no there is no cure for it that I'm aware of. Except the time machine. What's that? Except the time, time, time machine. machine. Right, right. If you could figure that one out, you're you're uh, you're not working on weekends anymore, right? <laughs> All right, Doc. All right, I'm going to let uh, Chuck know you're on the air because he probably tuned it off when he saw that pre-recording. So. Well, I, I tried to let you know that I was on the show because you always uh, call in with very interesting I, questions. and I look forward to it every week, and yeah. I hope you show up every week at 5 minutes to 6 so we don't have these. Yeah, I, I tried, but I'm telling you, I, I've had a lot of new patients starting at the beginning of the year, and that's always the issue with all these insurance companies, and they flux back and forth. Uh, Southwest Medical had a big change in providers. A couple of them left. Um, 
I think Leviser retired and, and Dr. Avram moved on to a different area. So with that brings new patients over to me. And uh, so a lot of new people, a lot of complicated issues. It's not, I mean, when you come to my office, you're going to wait a while to see me. And then the only reason is because I take my time to understand your, your issues. And it's not something you can do in a 10 minute visit. Uh, but I never know what I'm going to get into. Um, well, you need some backup. You need somebody to go there and, and lock it up for you at well, 5 they, minutes they, to 6, and then they, you show up 10 after. Yeah, they turned my schedule down, and I think what I'm going to do is probably move my schedule around for no new patients on Monday so that I can get out for the show. I mean, they cut my patients off at 2.30, but it's because I can't predict what's going to happen. Like the la one of the last patients I had today was a hospital follow-up. Somebody I'd never seen before is a brand new patient, you know, the lovely family. But I mean, those, those types of interviews take time if you want to do a good job and understand. I mean, you got an 85-year-old gentleman coming in that has 85-year history and you're trying to understand that in a 10-minute visit. It's just, I mean, I'm good, but I'm not that good. <laughs> you're good. All right. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll let Chuck know, and maybe I'll call in the last segment. If okay, don't have yeah, I look forward to it. You always have great great topics for discussion. Right. So Keep thanks. the faith. Power to the people. Great a flag, man, over and out. All right, Ray, thank you so much. And again, uh, and, and really for the average caller out there, I mean, if there's something, maybe you went to your doctor and you want a second opinion. Um, I'll try and do the best I can. Uh, um, but I will tell you this, I'm not going to overrun a cardiologist and I'm not going to overrun a specialist. And, and the reason I, do, I don't is because ethically I can't. I mean, if, if, I, if a cardiologist tells you to do X, Y, and Z, as a family practitioner, if I say, oh, no, 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 don't do that, then I'm telling you and the world that I know more about medicine than that cardiologist. Now, I may know a lot of things, but I'm nowhere going to stand on a, on a pedestal and say I know more about the heart than that cardiologist does. That's his lifelong endeavor. Okay, so, and when I do get situations when I'm concerned about medications with patients, I'll usually pick up the phone and call the cardiologist um, if they'll answer and discuss it, you know, and get the okay to do what I'm going to do so that I don't overstep their toes. That's the ethical thing to do. The ethical thing is that if you're seeing a specialist, um, you know, I had one patient today that said, well, I wanted to ask you before I did that. Well, I appreciate that confidence. I really do. But at the same time, I want you to understand, I, I, I sometimes can't make that decision over an expert because I don't spend my life doing that. Um, but common sense usually rules the day. Um, and that's usually how I guide a lot of what, what I do. And I have this I have a saying, and, and, it, and it really makes sense, that if there's no method to your madness, it's just madness. So, you know, you have to have a reason to do something. Um, if you don't have a reason to do something, don't do it, plain and simple. Um, and if you think about it, then you probably do need to do it. These are some of the simple rules that we have have in medicine. And, you know, Dr. Savern, who used to come on the show a long, long time ago, and, and uh, you know, he uh, hurt his neck and... Uh, so he hasn't been uh, seeing patients in town, but um, he had the three A's of medicine about doctors. When you know, and and the number one A, um, well, actually, hold that thought. We'll talk about the three A's after the break. We'll be right back. I'll keep you glued to the TV. At Bees Embroidery, we offer custom screen printing as well as embroidery on all of your favorite garments. We can even create a patch for your club's design. We use the best names when crafting our products like Port Authority, Haynes, and Gildan. We're open Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 5, and Monday and Saturday by appointment. For a honey of a job, call us, Bees Embroidery, at 775-727-9444. Find us on the web at beesembroidery.net or email us at beesembroidery at yahoo.com. If you have any paperback books that are in good condition, why not donate them to Nevada Cure, an organization that provides books to Nevada State prisoners. Nevada Cure is a prison reform group that tries to help inmates while they're in prison and helps transition them into the community when they are released. These books help educate and entertain and are needed to help rehabilitate the incarcerated. Call 702-758-3147 to donate your tax-deductible paperback books at 702-758-3147. Enjoy the day at Mountain Falls Golf Course. Our pro shop has everything you need and want for a perfect day of golf. 
Enjoy the award-winning course of rolling hills and magnificent fairways, all part of a picturesque setting at an extremely reasonable rate, including the cart. Finish up with a delicious meal and refreshing drinks in the beautiful grill room. Mountain Falls, experience the magic of a perfect day well spent. For your tea time, call 537-6553. Mental health and learning disorders don't discriminate. 17 million children and adolescents in the United States live with disorders like anxiety, depression, ADHD, and dyslexia. Less than half get the help they need to thrive. Help the Child Mind Institute change these children's lives. Visit childmind.org. I think we have Chuck on the phone. Chuck? Yeah, hi, Doc. How you doing tonight? Great, bud. How are you? Good. I tuned in just as Ray was going to begin, so I was psyched out. Well, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're here. What can I do for okay, you? Okay, great. Tomorrow night, uh, we're going to do our show, and I'm going to demonstrate how I make CBD oil, so anyone interested can watch, uh, which leads me to my cancer investigation for the week, and it kind of uh, led me into CBD, and... Uh, what they're doing with it regarding cancer. And I was amazed that many monoclonal antibodies in that that are being applied to cancer uh, are directed toward the CB1 and CB2 receptor of the cannabinoid system. Hmm. And uh, there's many experimental drugs that are in these uh, clinical trials now that are also uh, in, in basically along with other proteins, et cetera, they're honing in on these cannabinoids. And it really shocked me because uh, it seems since early 2000s they've identified these that, uh, you know, as THC or CBD is applied to these receptors, they have a significant anti-tumor effect. Hmm. And, and all kinds of, they actually kill the uh, cancer cells in some cases. And uh, they certainly inhibit its uh, uh, metastasis, and et cetera. So it has a tremendous effect, it seems. And, of course, a lot of more research is being done. But I'm, I'm amazed at how much information was out there. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that, that's my two bits for tonight. Uh, glad you're doing this show. I got great news this uh, week that my granddaughter's cancer is not spread which uh, makes it very much uh, improved survival. So yep. no she's going to have her operation on the 1st of March. So, Well, I, you know, when you told me that, I, I didn't really mention anything. I was going to let you mention it. And, and I, you know, that's something that's, you know, I, I mean, as we get older, we expect that eventually we're going to die from something. And, you know, cancer is one of those possibilities, but to see a young child go through cancer, it just, it doesn't fit the story that I tell all the time about losing, you know, thymus cells and, and eventually, uh, you know, getting a cancer that your body can't fight off. So, you know, young cancers are notoriously more aggressive um, because you expect to have a young, functioning, good blood flow, good circulation, good immune system, and so it, it, it defies that that logic, um, right. and uh, that makes it really difficult. The only good news is is that because their body is so regenerative, they're able to handle the the treatments a lot better. Um, but I uh, than than someone in their you know 60s and 70s as opposed in, in a younger one. But still, that that's not a good reason to get cancer because they can handle the treatment better. Yeah, and the, the chemo is making her so horribly nauseous. Yeah. And in fact, one of the drugs they're giving her is based on THC to try to ease the nausea. Yeah. And so, they, yeah, they do use uh, Marinol and other things like that in, in children to help, you know, offset that. But, um, 
You know, it, it's like I said, I, I think, you know, we're, we're probably another 20 to 30 years from unlocking more genome, and, and, and maybe I, I exaggerate that, it could be less. Um, but, you know, the thing about it is, is big pharma, you know, there, there may be, and I don't know this for sure, but there may be some issues like, you know, big oil will buy up energy. Uh, oh, absolutely. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll take devices that, that we invent that help reduce our dependency on oil, and they'll just buy it up and lock it in a safe so nobody ever sees it so that we keep buying up oil and we keep buying oil. Now, I don't know if big pharma is buying up, you know, new medications that can cause and cure cancer because they want to keep selling the same shit that, excuse my French, but to, uh, you know, the public out there. Um, but that, that's bad. That, that really is. I mean, that's not what we should be about. Well, the best news I saw from Trump was he aggressively attacked the prices we're paying yep. in the U.S., uh, compared to other rich countries. Oh, and the fact that he's taken on the big pharma, I mean, that, if we ever got rid of those jerks that are controlling this, Lord knows what's available that has been suppressed. Well, I think it's, it's like this. You want to use a, 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 the right population to use drugs. Uh, let me give you an example. In Europe, there is no way, I mean, I, you know, there's more of a social uh, care. So, I mean, one of, the, one of the great, you know, in Europe, you don't have to pass a lot of the same scrutiny that we do. And so Resolin, Resolin was one of these drugs they used for diabetes. It's part of the triglyzone family. And they brought Resolin into the United States because they didn't have any problems with it in Europe. But it immediately started killing people, right. um, and it started causing liver failure in the elderly and a whole bunch of other, other issues. So um, what I'm trying to say is that in some respects, bringing a drug to market does take a lot of, it costs pennies to make, but the research and the FDA, I mean, you know, if you wanted to change the label on metformin, it cost you a million dollars to do that. Now, that's a drug that's generic, and that's been very useful, very anti-inflammatory, maybe even very useful for breast cancer and other things of that nature. But nobody talks about it because nobody's going to pay the FDA a million dollars. And that's a, that's a congressional thing. The, the Congress has to do that. I mean, that's insane. So, you know, President Trump can do what he can do, but... I'm beginning to believe, like most people, that there are some forces in back in the government that you and I would not be happy with. And you know, you used to work in that. Kind Absolutely. Of, you know, I, I mean, I, this this deep state and this entrenchment is it's pretty ugly. It really is, and I yeah. think I think it's holding us as a society back from helping each other and curing a lot of illnesses that are out there. Without a doubt. Okay, I'll get off, Doc. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Chuck, and. Uh, Thanks for keeping me updated on your granddaughter, and, and uh, if you're out there uh, viewing public, you know, say a prayer for Chuck's granddaughter, yeah. a young, beautiful lady who's uh, got an osteosarcoma, which is a real nasty tumor, and uh, so, you know, for those that people that believe in prayer... Um, Thanks, say, Doc. I appreciate it. Yeah, say something Love for it. Chuck's granddaughter. So, anyway, uh, thanks again for calling, and uh, appreciate that. So, the three A's of medicine, we were, uh, we were going to talk about that at the break. So, one of them is availability. The, your doctor or your nurse practitioner or your PA or your provider has to be available. They could be the best doctor in the world, but if you can't get in to see them, they're absolutely worthless to you. And then the next one is affability. You got to like the person you're seeing. So, and then the last one is their ability, right? So, uh, got to be able to get in, got to like them. A lot of times they'll, people will stay with that. And then finally they'll wake up and realize, well, you know, this person isn't doing anything for me. So I guess I need to switch somebody else. Right. Yeah, Doc, what Chuck forgot to mention he mentioned, but he didn't tell you the name of the show. He does a show it's, uh, every third Tuesday night on Channel 25 called Nye County. And he brings out different things about what's happening in the county and what's happening with, with the commissioners and everything else. And so it's at 6 o'clock, the same time slot as you, but he's on Tuesday, the third Tuesday. Uh -huh. So I encourage people at least check it out because it's an excellent show. He usually handles it by himself. He does have a... Uh, uh, co-host uh, Tom Gibson, but Gibson's a lawyer, and you never know where he's going to be. He may be in trial or just uh, caught in a rainstorm sometimes. Right. So I encourage people to watch that. 
And about this, uh, this oil that, that uh, Chuck is talking about, I found very positive results as far as the aid to sleep. Now, like you had mentioned yep. last week on the show when I called in, it might not work for everybody, and that's correct. But what I like about it is no, there's no THC in it. There's no high. You don't have to worry about getting spaced out or anything. But the CBD oil that is, that is manufactured from hemp that Chuck is, has uh, been you know, getting this stuff, he, he does it himself, it's absolutely legal, and people should be informed that if he can help them, maybe they should look into it and, you know, uh, Sometimes it's these miracles are right in front of us. We just don't don't see them. Yep. I yep. want to say something. I'm going to do it on your show all the time. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I hope you have a good night tonight. Uh, Ray the Flagman, over and out. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that. And you know, I I, um, I uh, was in Texas this uh, past week for Valentine's Day and and to see my wife, and we went to the rodeo in in uh, san antonio and you know it was nice to uh, attend an event where um, there was prayer there was prayer before the event um, and it was just you know and i'm thinking you know we just we've moved away from that and and this is that and i'm going to say this this is this is the anarchy that we're facing right i mean if you don't have a higher power if you don't have somebody to answer to and you don't want to answer to anybody then there's free reign to do whatever you want to do and we're right on the verge of anarchy when it comes to that and you know, I try not to keep the show political, but unfortunately, um, you know, when you don't have any rule of law, there is no rule, and so anarchy involves. So for those people that fear, um, and I'm not saying you have to be, you know, I, I don't like living in fear of God. That's not what God is. God is a kind, loving Father who wants the best for us. It's only us who get in the way of that, and we make decisions that sometimes um, we have to bear the consequences of those decisions. So, um, and and prayer is not something you use only when you're in trouble, but um, you want to use it during the day to help guide you and, and for answers and guide you and, and look for what's the goodness in the heart and not what's the badness. And I've said it on the show a long, long time ago, um, I think what's happening in the world is there's not enough random acts of kindness um, to offset the random acts of violence that, that we get uh, pummeled with every day, all the shootings and all the anger. And, you know, unfortunately the media, the TV is a lot of cause of that. You know, they don't let it settle. They will not let it settle, and that's too bad. They need to stop the rhetoric. They need to stop the hate and the anger and the name calling and let people live and let live. And if we do that, if we respect everybody's right to be the person they want to be, as long as it doesn't pick your pocket or break your leg, as Jefferson would say, then then that's the way it should be. Uh, and I know all the people out there that you know, that's why we have fences, right? Fences are boundaries. Fences tell us where we need to stay. Um, and they make good neighbors. So uh, remember that when you're out there. Uh, respect, respect everybody's opinion. Um, at the end of the day, that's what matters most. Um, stay healthy, stay happy, stay warm. I'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. Nathan Adelson Hospice, our goal is treating the whole person, body, mind, and soul, the way you define it. When medical science can no longer add days to your life, it is the goal of Nathan Adelson Hospice to add life to your days. Ask your doctor for a referral to Nathan Adelson Hospice, because hospices are not all the same. They said it could be some kind of food allergy. My muscles ached. I was tired all the time. It happened like that, a full-blown asthma attack. It was scary. The unsettling thing about some symptoms is... A fever, headaches. I have these red, itchy welts. You don't always know what's causing them. It was Lyme disease from a tick bite. I had West Nile virus from a mosquito. A reaction triggered by cockroach allergens. 
bed bugs. Threats to your health can come from the most unexpected places. Mosquitoes can transmit West Nile virus and also Zika virus. Ticks can carry Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And allergens from cockroaches can trigger asthma attacks, leading to respiratory distress. Don't wait until you or someone you love is suffering with unexplained symptoms. Get the facts you need to protect your family. Visit pestworld.org. Shoshone Propane, the only locally owned propane company in Nye County, can help you with all of your propane needs. We serve all residential and commercial customers. Our staff and drivers are the best. Our service team is available 24-7 and our experience friendly and courteous. Our rates are among the lowest and we offer easy access to our dispenser for your filling needs. Servicing Pahrump, Beatty, Amargosa, Lathrop Wells, Shoshone, Tacopa, Death Valley, Furnace Creek, and the outlying areas in Inyo County. Call 775-727-9544.